Hello, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of NAC Edition. In this week's episode, we'll be giving you coverage of the MFA Art Exhibition held at the SFA School of Art Building, providing an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at who keeps Dolly's Diner in Nacogdoches running, highlighting the memorable moments captured from the Nacogdoches Kite Festival, deliver the coverage of the extravagant shop and stroll event held downtown, and of course, give you the latest sports report of March Madness, NFL news, and updates on SFA baseball. You've got an extra sick day, so go ahead and call in to work because NAC Edition starts now. Davis. And I'm Cheyenne Gibbs. And you are tuning in into today's episode of NAC Edition. With construction dating back to May of 2017, the bridge over Lanana Creek on Star Avenue was finished and reopened on Friday at 3.37 p.m. Star Avenue is located by the intramural fields on SFA's campus and is a popular route for the local college students and Nacogdoches residents. Star Avenue can once again act as a cut-through route from North Street to University Drive. Because Star Avenue is a part of a state highway, the city did not have to pick up the costly $1.7 million tab. Two SFA art students showed off their artwork in finishing their undergraduate and graduate degrees at the SFA Art Building this past weekend. Zach Carr has more on the story. Last Friday evening, Nacadition visited the SFA Art Building to catch the end of a week-long MFA exhibition. It showcased the portfolios of two artists at SFA, undergrad Paige Cannon and grad student Bailey Coe. After weeks and months of preparation, their work was finally ready to be displayed to the public. I would say the most difficult part of putting this show together was deciding how I wanted to frame everything and how I wanted to present it, what color frames I wanted to use, um, if I wanted it to be weighted or if I wanted it even border on all sides. Further on in her career, Cole has spent a number of years at SFA, which she feels has been an incredible help to her. In terms of professionalism, um, really the professors here are top, top notch in just um, teaching us how to go out into the world and be a better artist. Also with, um, you know, getting into exhibitions and uh, making it as an artist, not specifically just teaching, but just uh, Figuring out, you know, how, how the art world works, fine arts, and learning the language, the vocabulary, and um, just really strengthening us as people, not just students. If you are interested in taking a look at some of the finest work from the art building, located on Wilson Drive, the art department will be hosting an exhibition of its students' work all through the month of April. Reporting for NAC Edition, I'm Zach Carr. Over the weekend, downtown Nacogdoches hosted its shop and stroll event downtown. Businesses came together to provide visitors and locals with great deals, new merchandise, and sweet treats. Shops were set up to show off new products, clothing, and accessories, including Heart of Texas, Fallon Boutique, and House of Traditions. The event had many people strolling the streets to their favorite shops. Those who attended looked forward to discounted prices, new spring arrivals, and goodies to add to their wardrobe or home. The Shop and Stroll event is held several times a year, and you can visit the Nacogdoches Chamber of Commerce for upcoming dates. The Helping House put on the Nacogdoches Kite Festival this past Sunday. Zach Carr has more on the story. Helping House, a full-day school program benefiting children with autism, hosted its annual NAC Kite Festival for 2018 at the Nacogdoches Regional Airport. Children of all ages, parents, grandparents, and pets were welcomed at the event. The event was from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Parents parked their vehicles and set up their lawn chairs and enjoyed seeing everyone come out to fly their kites. A local family gave their thoughts on the festival. I kind of got here to the wall here, just kind of walking around, seeing people watching kites. I've lived in Nacogdoches my whole life. I never knew that this happened here. So, it's kind of amazing to be able to see it and know that they have. Heading to places as small as Nac, you still have surprises. Yeah. <laughs> The airport offered space for many families to walk around and enjoy the festivities. The Helping House relied heavily on volunteers to put the event together and had a check-in station for anyone wanting to volunteer. The Helping House will send all proceeds from the event to fundraise its summer clinic benefiting children with autism. For more information, you can visit its website at www.thehelpinghouse.org. 
It's also not too late to donate either. Just check them out online. As well as the kiting aspect of the day, there were many other activities on offer. Food trucks came out in their numbers, offering all types of delicacies. Kids failed to go unentertained as there was face painting, moon houses, rock climbing, and many more programs throughout the course of the day. The Helping House were keen for children to be their target audience for the day, and made sure that they were thoroughly amused. It believes that this is the best age to introduce them to such activities as they are more likely to stay involved later on in life. They try and make long-lasting memories that will encourage families to want to come back year after year. As you can see from the picturesque scenery behind me, the 2018 Nacogdoches Kite Festival has been one of the most successful in recent history. Hosted by the Helping House, raising money for children with autism, there's a plethora of activities for everyone of all generations to do here. Ice cream, face painting, rock climbing, and of course, kiting. Come out next year to the Nacogdoches Regional Airport to enjoy this splendid day. For Nacogdoches, I'm Zach Carr. Dolly's Diner and Old Town Sandwich Shop are two sister businesses downtown that get a lot of action from locals and students. Zach Carr has more on the story. In recent years, there has been one eatery that has had people visiting downtown Nacogdoches in waves. Dolly's Diner, opened in 2015, has since become a major part of the social hub of the downtown area. Owned by Stephen Dolly Guyerman, the couple also take care of Old Town after buying it in 2008, a more refined restaurant with a calmer, more historic setting. Originally from South Dakota, Steve owned a restaurant in a college town in Phoenix, Arizona. And after moving to Nack with his wife Dolly, the pair are proud of the improvements they have made to Old Town. We started marketing more to SFA, taking care of students, making sure that everything was going to be a reasonable price, good value for food, and taking care of all the locals downtown. The Goyamans absolutely love their jobs and take pride in the fact that they are hands-on and visible to their customers both at Dolly's and Old Town. My job role is uh, like the fire department. I have to put out fires, no matter what, wherever it is. Um, customer relations, it's cooking, it's ordering an inventory, it's purchasing, marketing, advertising. And Dolly and I are very present and hands-on. So as you can see, both Dolly's Diner and Old Town are two of the main attractions here in downtown Nacogdoches. With customers ranging from NAC locals to SFA students, everyone seems to be a fan. With NAC Edition, I've been Zach Carr. When we come back, we welcome two very special guests from SFA's Chi Omega, philanthropy chairman Madison Walker and president Courtney Shade, will be informing us about their philanthropy Make-A-Wish Foundation. Stay tuned. <laughs> Here with us today is Madison Walker, the philanthropy chairman and president Courtney Shade from SFA's Chi Omega Sorority. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. How Thank are you? you for coming in. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, we're going to take a quick look at Chi Omega's adopt and make a wish child, Ryan Logan. So let's take a quick look.
What a moving video we just watched. Um, do you mind letting us know, or the audience, um, briefly what the Make-A-Wish Foundation is? Make-A-Wish Foundation is a nonprofit organization that grants um, children with um, life-threatening medical illnesses wish. So most of the time children wish to go, wish to be, wish to meet, or wish to have. And Make-A-Wish Foundation gives them that opportunity. What kind of wishes can you grant? Specifically for Ryan, we're planning on granting his wish to go to Atlantis and swim with dolphins. It's been different every semester. Some kids want to go to Disney World, some kids want to go to Hawaii. So we've had the opportunity to grant all those different wishes, which is super awesome. So, uh, so with y'all's event coming up, how do y'all fundraise for that, or how do you get the community involved? Well, we have Wish Week. Every semester, we dedicate one week called Wish Week, and on campus, we'll have like booths and um, this year we're having like a donut day where people can buy donuts and then like those kind of things and then the way the community can get involved is on april 6th we're having our event at nacogdoches festival park and it's going to be a family friendly concert event and we're going to have joey greer and curtis grimes performing and so families can just come out and hang out there'll be food trucks and bounce houses for kids and stuff. um tell us about ryan um, Ryan is 15 years old and he has AVM, which is arteriovenous malformation, and um, he had his stroke two and a half years ago, and for the past two years he's been like in intensive therapy. He's had to learn how to re he had to relearn how to walk, talk, eat, and even use the bathroom. But now Ryan is doing very well. He only has um, weakness on the left side of his body and he's paralyzed in his left arm, but like they think with time it can get better. Have y'all ever had the chance to actually meet Ryan? Uh, we have not, but his family and friends and him are coming to our event, so we're really excited to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation and get to meet him and stuff at our event on April 6th. Um, what, uh, man, I just drew a blank. My whole brain went away. <laughs> um, so how did you go about um, becoming philanthropy chair? Like, um, how did you get into that or wanting to sponsor Make-A-Wish? Um, the reason I became philanthropy chair is because my whole life, I've, like, loved Make-A-Wish. My family has been big on donating and, like, doing stuff like that. And so it's one of the reasons I chose Chi Omega. My mom has a congenital heart defect, and so it's, like, I've been on the side where, like, you see a family member who's ill, and so I feel like I know what it's like to be in that position. And then the illness on the patient just doesn't take a toll on just the patient. It, like, affects the whole family. So the reason I wanted to be a philanthropy chair was because, um, I want to help the whole family, like for them to escape the illness and like get away from the pain and the hurt for a short period of time and do something that's going to bring them all joy and happiness would just like change their world. Right, yeah, it's very important. To uh, what's been the most rewarding experiences for you guys? Being able to grant the wishes and actually raise enough money to send um, these Make-A-Wish kids to where they want to go. We have to raise $8,900 for Ryan to go to Atlantis, and we are definitely on the right track for that, so I'm excited to see where we end up. That's um, awesome. So you get to see their re reactions to that and see them yeah, be so, so happy. Yes, we get to see pictures when they actually get to go to Atlantis and like swim with dolphins, so it's always rewarding to be able to present those to the chapter and say, look what we did. Yeah. So. So do you actually get to go on the trip, or like, no, you just get to kind of see the backside of it? Yes, the okay. backside. And how's the feedback been from kids who have been granted wishes? Like, what have they said about it after the fact? They've all, like, totally loved it. One of our sisters in our chapter, her sister had her wish granted, um, and we raised the money for, to send her family to Disney World, and it literally, like, brought, Haley had cancer, the little girl, and it brought her family so much joy, and, like, it brought her so much more hope to see, wow, like, I can do this. You're not, like, just in a hospital so much and, like, having so much, like, negative and being stuck and poked and prodded at all the time. Like, you actually get to go out and do something fun and something you'll love, and it, like, it's really their just it. lifts their spirit. Yep. And mm -hmm. um, so for the community, why um, should someone from the community come out to your event, or what would you say to someone who's interested in coming out to the event? It'll be a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and you'll get to see the – Performers come and perform, and there's going to be a bunch of like make a wish booths around and donation opportunities that we would greatly, greatly appreciate as we raise money to send Ryan to Atlantis. Cool. And what's y'all's goal right now? Like, are y'all almost there? Have y'all met it, or how far away are y'all from the, your goal? Um, with after the event, we will meet our goal, but we are still trying to like up our ticket sales and like bring the community out and kids out. We're gonna have so much to do for kids. We're gonna have bounce houses and like games and stuff. So we really just like want to make it. Family fun for everything. The tickets are ten dollars for adults, five for kids, four to twelve, and then four and under are free. 
So very cool. That's awesome. So you can really get the whole community involved. Yes. Um, if anybody wanted to find out more information about this, where could they go? Um, there's a Kickin' It for a Cause Facebook page, and we are also on Eventbrite, where you can also purchase your tickets there. But if you search Kickin' It for a Cause on Facebook, it should show you And there will be a link there for your tickets. So. Yes. Can you donate outside of these events? Um, yes, you can. There is a link on the Facebook page as well for other donations. Okay. Well, thank you so much, um, Madison and um, Courtney, for coming in and speaking with us today. We really appreciate it. Um, we love Make-A-Wish Foundation, and we're really proud that they came in and talked to us. Um, when we come back, we'll be looking at the news happening in sports, so stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. We have a lot going on this week in professional sports, college basketball, and SFA sports. So let's begin with some March Madness. After a little over two weeks, we are down to the final four teams in the NCAA tournament. 68 teams later, and Loyola, Illinois, Michigan, Kansas, and Villanova are ready to compete to prove they are the best team in the NCAA Division I basketball. This past Sunday, Duke took Kansas into an exhausting overtime where they weren't able to hold on and lost to the Kansas Jayhawks 81-85. to On Saturday, March 31st, the 11th seed Loyola, Illinois, will go up against the 3rd seed Michigan, and both seed ones, Villanova and Kansas, will compete to be in the final two. The final two teams will compete for the NCAA trophy at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, April 2nd. Senior Duke Grayson Allen career is over. After his 3-13 poor shooting performance, he is unable to help Duke get to another championship. He contributed four years of blood, sweat, and tears to earn the captain title on a team with so much NBA talent, but he wasn't always seen as a leader. Just a year ago, Allen went from being seen as a villain by fans because of his unsportsmanship conduct to a team captain and role model for the underclassmen. Well, we will see who takes that NCAA trophy April 2nd in San Antonio. Sister Jean Dolores Smith is flooding social media. The 98-year-old old nun and super fan of Loyola Illinois University, Chicago, has become a media sweetheart. She has been following Loyola Illinois basketball for half a century, and before every game, she has a simple prayer that goes, Good and gracious God, go Ramblers. Loyola Chicago recruited Sister Jean into the Athletic Department's Hall of Fame in 2017, making her the 173rd member to be enrolled. Born in San Francisco in 1919, Sister Jean also played a little basketball in high school. So all the Loyola University fans, let's hope Sister Jean Dolores Smith prayers are enough to get the Loyola Illinois to the final two in San Antonio April 2nd. In football, Philadelphia Eagles defensive in Michael Bennett failed to respect his elderly. A warrant is out for his arrest after a grand jury indicted him on a felony charge of injury to the elderly related to an incident at NRG Stadium following Super Bowl 51, according to the Office of District Attorney of Harris County, Texas. Michael allegedly shoved his way onto the field, knocking down 66-year-old paraplegic security guard woman. The woman suffered a sprained shoulder, according to Acevedo. He noted that the authorities are in contact with Bennett's lawyer, and Michael Bennett is planning to turn himself in later this week. He can face up to 10 years if convicted. Stephen F. Austin State University has many, many intramural programs and sports clubs. If you're looking for a competitive fund, the National Intramural Recreational Sports Association is a great program to be a part of here at Stephen F. Austin State University. This past weekend was the NIRSA basketball tournament. Several teams from all universities from the country gathered at Texas A&M University to compete in bracket play for a chance to go to Ohio to play for the national championship title. Our own SFA women's and men's club basketball were both able to compete in this tournament. Unfortunately, the men's and women's basketball team were un eliminated in the third round in the tournament and weren't able to advance to Ohio. Strikes have been handed out back at J.C.'s field. SFA men's baseball blew out Abilene Christian University this previous weekend in a three-game winning streak. 
The Jacks put their 13-game road losing streak behind them and pounded the Wildcats 16-3 in just seven innings. Junior Trayson Kubo helped the Jacks rack up a total of 26 hits and 46 runs against ACU. Garrigus and Martin put the finishing touches on SFA's victory by striking a run battle in a two-run double, respectively, in the Jacks' three-run in the ninth inning. They are on a roll and don't plan on stopping anytime soon. The Jacks went up against Texas Southern University this past Tuesday afternoon and were able to come out with a 5-4 and four win against the Tigers. Their next game is March 29th versus Incarnate World. Well, that is all we have for this week in sports on NAC Edition. Be sure to tune in next week for your latest news and sports happening here in NAC Edition. Now back to Alex and Cheyenne. The Little Princess Tea Party was held this past weekend at the Ruby M. Azalea Garden. Princesses ages 3 to 10 were able to come out and enjoy a day of delightful treats, music, and activities. Event coordinators Elise Roadwald and Dr. Cheryl Boyette have been hosting events for young children for over 10 years. This was Roadwald and Boyette's first time hosting the Princess Tea Party in the garden, where they included a puppet show, a butterfly release, and a planting activity. Roadwald and Boyette focus on cultivating young minds while allowing them to celebrate their strengths and believe in themselves. Roadwald expressed, what never gets old is seeing the joy and enthusiasm on their faces. Although this was the first tea party they have hosted in the garden, their hopes are to have many more to come. So for all the charming butterfly fairies and magical princesses out there who have missed this event, be sure to look out for the next year's event next year. With an Edition, this has been Alex Davis. And I'm Cheyenne Gibbs. And be sure to tune in next week for a brand new episode of Edition.